Welcome back to the Gospelogen channel where I'm going to answer a question today that I got asked to answer and the question goes something like this. What's the difference between the fruit of the spirits and the gifts of the spirit? So today we're going to lock into that one but before I do that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get more videos as they come out. Let's start with the fruits of the spirit and then we'll walk over to the gifts of the spirit. So the fruits of the spirit are really laid out for us really well in Galatians chapter 5 or if you don't really have a stomach for reading the bible you could go find that silly kid song the fruit of the spirit's not a coconut but honestly you should probably just stick into god's word but if you think the fruit of the spirit is a coconut then <laughs> this video is for you because it is not so as we get into galatians 5 it's really interesting most people skip straight to like verse 22 and in verse 22 of galatians 5 paul's hey love joy peace patience kindness gentle goodness faithfulness he starts listing off all these things that are fruits of the spirit it's actually important that we back up and we look at a few verses right before that so if you start up you're going to get verse 8 18 of chapter 5 of Galatians, he says, hey, now, if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are obvious. And he starts telling us what the fruit of our flesh is. And so the fruit of the Spirit is literally behavior, attitude, mindset, perspective changes produced by the Holy Spirit in us. If you are led by your flesh nature, think sin nature. If you're led by that, you're going to have idolatry, sorcery, jealousy, anger, selfish rivalries, dissensions. All the bad stuff comes from our flesh. That's the kind of stuff that we need to fight. And if you've been saved and you put your faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ to be your Savior, then now the Spirit indwells you. And so you're not a slave to your flesh anymore. You're not under the law like that. The law has been fulfilled for you, and you are free to live out good works and be holy like God's called you to do. But you're going to need the Spirit to do this. That's one of the things that frustrates people is they think the fruit of the Spirit is something that they have to manufacture. And I don't know why we skip over this, but the fruit of the Spirit is only something the Spirit can give you. So don't get frustrated yourself if you're not manifesting more. You need to lean into the Spirit more. You need to be more saturated in God's Word. It's a whole process, sanctification, walking through this thing where I become more like Christ and less like me. I like to tell people it like this. How would you chisel an elephant out of a marble block? The saying goes, you chip away everything that doesn't look like an elephant. But that's going to take a long time. And so as you become more like Christ, it's going to take a while as we chip away all the things that don't look like Christ in your life. And so we're going to continually kill the flesh. We're going to crucify the flesh. We're going to fight our sin. And we're going to grow in the spirits as we make room for the spirit to work. And so love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, faith, all these things are things the spirit will work in you. And you'll start seeing more of them in your life. So as you grow in your walk with God, you'll see more of these things. Which is why if you ever meet some old person in a church, and they're just like bitter, hateful, and angry. I've met them. They exist. That's not someone that's exhibiting spiritual character that's appropriate for the working of the Holy Spirit in their lives. They're actually going in reverse. The older you get, the more time you have with Christ, the more these fruits should be evident in your life, both to you and those around you. And it's one of the things that testifies to us is the assurance of our salvation because I know God's working in me because there's more love, there's more joy, there's more peace, there's more faithfulness. It's, it's not perfect. But there's more. But now let's switch over to the gifts of the Spirit because that's slightly different. And there's more passages to walk through as you get into the gifts of the Spirit. So some key passages for you if you're studying this out. You're going to need to look into 1 Corinthians 12, uh, specifically verses 8 through 10. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 through 11. Romans 12, 6 through 8. And Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. Now, the gifts of the Spirit, this is really debated in Christendom. And maybe you've heard these terms like, I'm a continuationist or I'm a cessationist. And I don't know that I could really articulate either side well enough to be a good, solid defense for either one. But I'll say this, the continuous and the cessationist, you need to spend some time working on this. I'm not a cessationist. I don't believe that the gifts of the Spirit have ceased. And mainly that's because of where all we see them. And there's no specific scripture that says the gifts have ceased. However, I don't always identify with a large group in the continuationist crowd that seems to take the gifts of the Spirit, change the definitions to meet what they want, and then they practice them. For instance, tongues. Uh, a cessationist would say the gift of tongues has ceased. And I would say maybe the gift of tongues is partly me being able to proclaim the gospel in an articulate fashion. But the biblical gift of tongues was that someone spoke in a language they previously hadn't been trained in, and someone who knew that language heard the gospel in their own language. That was a biblical gift of tongues. People with no experience saying real languages they'd never heard before for the purpose of edifying the church and sharing the gospel with other people. 
It's not what you see nowadays many times practices tongues where someone speaks blibber blather and they don't even know what they're saying and no one knows what they're saying. That's not biblical tongues. I think that there's some of these gifts like the gift of healing. I don't know that God has necessarily set apart people with a specific gift of healing. If they did that and they were biblical, I don't know why they wouldn't work in a children's hospital full time. It's always boggled my mind that the people who claim that they have a gift of healing have to sell tickets and ask you to come to them. And they make tons of money off poor people. And then there's a lot of debate as to whether a real healing happened. And lots of time they're uncovered to be frauds who were just making money off poor sick people. However, I've been in the room before when God has worked the gift of healing through his spirit, through someone that was called to pray for and intercede for someone in a James 5 situation where the elders lay hand anoint oil and wham, somebody gets healed. And that is really cool. And, and no money exchanges hands and it's just an act of the church being the church. And this is all happening within the context of a local church. The gift of healing seems to come. And then you've got Paul in Ephesians 4. He says, listen, I've given these gifts to your church. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the shepherd, the teacher. Those gifts are still active today. I think every pastor, every elder of a church needs to know, which way do I lean? How has God wired me? But when you start looking into the gifts of the, of the Spirit, these are things where God has supernaturally equipped you through His Spirit, maybe stronger at some times than others, but the goal there is to serve the church, to edify the saints, to help reach other people with the gospel. Those are true gifts of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, everybody's getting those and growing in those. But you're going to have a unique mixing of the giftings of the Spirit that He's equipped you to fit into your local body, your local group of believers, so that you can serve the church in that way. And so we are to use our gifts to serve one another and build up Christ Church. I hope this teaching is helpful for you. If it doesn't make sense, go ahead and drop a comment uh, in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer that as I can. Or if you have a different viewpoint and you think I'm flat wrong, go ahead and tell me. That's a great place to tell me. I'll see you next time on the Gospel Ogen channel.